And one of our many robotic stories. If you've been waiting for a price drop on Sharp's super adorable robotic phone, well, your wait is sort of over. As of October 6th, you can now get a Robohan for 138,000 yen, excluding tax. That's about $1,200 US. That's a pretty big drop, $530 off of the original price, but there is a catch. This new offering doesn't come with cellular function. Apart from that, this Wi-Fi only Robohan is otherwise identical to its LTE counterpart, packing the same Snapdragon 400 chipset, Android 5.0 OS, 2 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of storage, it has an 8 megapixel camera, and get this, a 720p Pico projector embedded in its head for your viewing pleasure. It also has a two inch VGA or QVGA touchscreen on the back of it. This thing is packed with technology. It's unclear whether this more affordable Robohan will boost sales in the consumer market. They have been a little sluggish, but Sharp is certainly interested in pushing this model to businesses, including shops, restaurants, tourist spots, and more. After all, this little robot can still sing and dance using just Wi-Fi connectivity. Alas, both Robohan models are still only available in Japan, but at least now you have a more valid excuse to make a shopping trip. Amazon is opening a bar for 10 days anyway. The web retailer is going to sell beer, wine, sake, and cocktails in Tokyo's Glincy Ginza District to promote alcoholic products sold on their website in Japan. While Amazon has opened physical bookstores, bought Whole Foods, and is testing a food market without cash registers in Seattle, this is the first time the e-commerce giant will operate an actual bar. It's part of a bigger push by Amazon to boost its physical presence to promote the array of merchandise sold on its website, and of course to branch out into new markets. Amazon Bar will offer a wide variety of drinks procured from across the globe, and offer exclusive products as well as samples of products that are not yet on store shelves. Instead of a menu, Amazon's 78 seat bar will feature an ordering system that will suggest drinks and also hire people to dispense wine advice. Nika whiskey, Yebasu beer, and other drinks will cost $4.50 to $13.50, and some food will be offered at the bar as well. The pop-up bar will be open for evenings beginning October 20th. The new bar is located in Ginza, Tokyo's prestigious shopping district where Apple and Louis Vuitton have flagship outlets. Surgeons in the Netherlands have successfully used a precision-enhancing robot to conduct a microsurgery for treating lymphedema. The microsurgery on tiny lymph and blood vessels was performed with the help of a pair of robot hands. It served as a motion-controlled assistant, if you will, and provided more control for the surgeons, turning the motions of their hands into smaller, more precise and tremor-free movements. Lymphedema is a serious condition, often occurring due to breast cancer treatment, which disrupts the flow of lymphatic fluid, leading to its buildup causing pain and swelling. Now, the treatment for the chronic condition is a complex microsurgery, which involves connecting lymphatic vessels to blood vessels to restore the flow to normal. As the procedure requires a high level of precision, not very many surgeons are actually able to do it. However, in this case, surgeons from UMC were able to alleviate the condition using robotic hands, developed by a company called MicroSure. The robot sutured vessels of 0.3 to 0.8 millimeters in the arm of the patient, who is now doing very well, by the way. The next step will be to use the bot for other advanced microsurgeries, which are impossible to perform by the human hand. The robot would help surgeons perform microsurgeries with higher precision and fewer complications. The successful surgery comes as robots continue to grow in healthcare as well as other fields. Honda just unveiled a robot for disaster relief efforts. We'll talk about that soon. While just a couple of weeks back, a Chinese robot performed a fully automated dental implant without 
any assistance at all. Why buy the cow when you can biofabricate the milk for free? There are 93.5 million heads of cattle in the U.S., but thanks to emerging biofabrication technologies, they could all soon be safe from the slaughterhouse. The issues commonly raised against modern cattle farming are not just the matter of the near genocidal numbers of bovines that are led to slaughter each year to feed the world's need for red meat, but that the cattle business is in general, an environmentally intensive industry. More than two-thirds of the world's available agricultural land is used for livestock production, with just 8% being used for directly consumable foods like grains and vegetables. But what if we could still get all the milk, meat, and even leather we want without the need to raise a single steer? Take real vegan cheese, for example. Unlike the wide array of dairyless cheese substitutes that you can find on the grocery shelves, RVC uses real cow's milk. Just no real cow. This project, a collaboration of more than two dozen researchers and citizen scientists, instead leverages genetically modified baker's yeast to produce milk proteins. The process is surprisingly simple. In fact, it's the same CRISPR-based technology that enabled a reporter to make antibiotic-resistant E. coli and for his boss to make glow-in-the-dark beer. It's also quite similar to how the medical community has leveraged yeast colonies to produce everything from vaccines to human insulin for years now. Yeast cultures can make more than just milk proteins. The New York-based startup Modern Meadow has managed to get the fungi to create collagen as well. You know, the stuff that leather's made from. The traditional method of making leather is a rather noxious process. Modern Meadow's method, on the other hand, eliminates the need for skin scraping, salting, and liming. These proteins group into the conventional triple helix collagen molecules and in turn, clump into collagen fibers. Modern Meadows then employs a proprietary process to arrange the fibers into sheets that could be tanned to create leather. Fascinating. Not only does this produce uniform quality skins without the nicks and scars one would find on normal cowhide, but it drastically reduces the environmental impact of the leather fabrication process. Clearly, cattle are only the start. In addition to beef, Memphis Meats recently unveiled an animal-free duck and chicken and is working on biofabricating pork as well. What's more, Tyson Foods, one of the world's largest meat producers, announced in December that it, too, is jumping into the animal-free meat game with an investment in plant-based meat maker Beyond Meat, as well as launching its own venture capital fund focused on sustainable food products. It will likely still be a couple of decades before before these foods are commercially viable, but given how quickly the human population is increasing, a more efficient means of feeding the world can't come soon enough.